Hello guys, welcome to a new video on Tower of God New World. And in this video, we're going to have a look on whether physical and magic resistances have a cap or we can reach 100% resistances on either of them. So to do that, we're going to use Arena Simulation and we're going to use a specific unit that we are going to find out really soon. After that, we're just going to talk about the units that are going to benefit about these resistances the most. Uh, yeah, that's basically all we're going to talk about. So the first part is obviously the testing. We're going to see how it works. We won't need any Excel for this. We won't need any formulas. It will be pretty much straightforward. So the unit I picked, because obviously, as you guys know, we cannot use gear or ignition weapons here in the arena simulation yet. So we need someone that can reach that value on their own without any additional uh, percentages or whatever. And that unit is Axe. Okay, I just removed her. Cool. Let's find her back here. Because she has 4% physical resistance coming from the plus 15 exclusive equipment and then 96% coming from her skill. So with that, we are at 100% precise, and we're going to see what happens. The enemy uh, could be anyone. The only thing is that they need to deal physical damage, obviously, like a Craptor here, and they don't uh, like they shouldn't have physical resistance decrease in their kit, and a Craptor doesn't, so it's perfect. We'll first start at the same. Uh, let's say link level and then we're going to also go below them by like 40 or so so that we can emulate what would happen in adventure so yeah let's have a look and see what actually happens here so I'm going to slow it down and also remove the uh, special skill cast in a second okay so we can see that a Craptor deals 3 billion damage to us, a little bit more than that, but yeah, 3 billion basically. And now Hax is going to cast the skill, and we can see that we are taking 1 damage. Even if that's a crit, we are still going to receive only 1 damage. This is pretty huge, I would say. Uh, we can run more tests, obviously, like I will just increase the attack of a Craptor just to double check if it changes anything or not. Let's try it again now. Hoping that he doesn't kill my hacks before she can actually cast this, the skill. So let's have a look. Okay, we start well with a couple of misses. Great, so she will survive for sure. And here we go again with 1-1-1. One, one, one. Perfect. So it doesn't matter like how much attack they have. They're, they are always going to deal 1. Let's have a look if that changes when we go below like 321. So a 40 level gap. I'm going to remove this time the attack bonus here. Because obviously otherwise it's just going to delete me, so it's fine. Let's have a look here and see if we are still receiving just one damage. Because as you guys uh, might know, there is a multiplier on top based on how many link levels we have of difference. It's not only based on attack and defense, it's also based on the actual difference in levels. So yeah, let's have a look. One, 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 one. So it won't it won't matter. You can be like level zero, but if you have one hundred percent physical or magic resistance, you are only going to take one damage. So that being said, which unit are going to benefit the most from this? And the first one that comes to mind is this guy here. This guy also in my tier list, I've never rated him 
too low because I always felt it was quite good. He has, at the start of the battle, he gets 40% physical and 40% magic resistance. Plus, with his exclusive equipment here, he's going to get a total of 60% physical and 50% magic resistance, which is really, really huge. With just the addition of the gear, like if we have a look at the equipment here, and we just uh, take this one from Urek for, for now. If we have a look here, we have 30, almost 30% 30 physical resistance, which would bring him to 90%, and then 10% magic that would bring him to close to 60%. Then if we put the slot 4 and slot 5 of the ignition weapon on top of it, that's going to be another 40% for both, which is 130% and 30 physical and close to 100% magical. Then if we have magic resistance in a few other roles, that's going to be even better. And we're going to cap also the magic resistance. That means that if the enemy doesn't have magic peers or physical peers, which they don't in adventure, like here, if we have a look, and we take my random guy over here. He has no peers whatsoever. So they are not going to deal more than one damage to Kurdan unless they have like the skills that are going to shred the resistances and stuff like that. So there will always be a case where, where you're going to receive damage. But still, I would say that's a really great thing to have. I would say some tanks could have that as a priority and that will make this guy actually quite viable he has like he seems to be built to deal kind of damage because his exclusive equipment is giving him crit rate which is weird and then he has like silence on two of the skills it, it doesn't seem to be a bad unit to be honest so i would definitely give this guy a shot it's true that he needs investment you need plus 20 on slot 4 and 5 of the of the ignition weapon you need to have him at least 3 red stuff like that but still I would say this guy is quite worth it uh, as a tech option at times against certain team comps and in general I wouldn't just uh, ignore slot 4 and slot 5 if they have resistances because they are really really good on units like close range uh, damage dealing units for example we could even take uh, Evankel. If we give Evankel additional resistances, she's going to survive a little bit longer. Uh, in general, resistances are not a bad bet. So there would be scenarios where you would go with resistances over the these more DPS options on the close range units. That's definitely something important to do. So yeah, I will also invest myself on some of those pieces. Because at the moment I only have like, I think this one, yeah, this one with magic resistance, but the rest of the rows are quite bad. Maybe this one is better. A little bit, but not much. So yeah, you should look for also have a couple of these pieces just in case you need to swap them in for close range units. Like for example, also Urek, I would run magic and physical resistance. I also changed my spreadsheet to like, reflect this choice. So yeah, that was just uh, a little bit overview. But then again, there are other units that are going to benefit a lot from this. Like for example, this guy, this guy has 80% physical and magic resistance for 16 seconds when he activates this skill, which if you couple it with over killing with all the other, like with the ignition weapon, with the gear, etc., is going to overcap it really, really easily so that when the opponent has magic peers or some kind of shred, he can still really take little damage. So this guy is also a good one. And he can also run the ignition weapon set, the defense one, which is going to give additional resistances on top which is really good because this guy has a provoke, which is not bad at all. So also Oriang kind of gets some value out of this. I would say overall 
uh, not a bad option as well. Then we have obviously Karaka. This guy is a crazy tank because he gets 30% here from the level 4 passive. Then he gets the additional one from this set here. That's going to give an additional 40% that he can stack really quickly with all the, the provokes he has. So really good. And then he also gets, no, I think nothing nothing else. Just he gets the default one from the gear, etc. So he is also a really solid option. Like here we can see that by default, he already has 67% physical and 40% magical. It's not really by default because this guy has magic here and physical here. Yes, so it's 20% less, but still, he has quite high resistances, then you put 40% on top, then you put another 30% from his exclusive equipment, and then an additional 20% because I'm still missing like close to 20% in both of them if you max out those two pieces. So he's also really going to be extremely tanky. And those are really important things to consider. Other units that could benefit could be like Zahard. Because Zahard is also another really good one. He has this skill that's going to give him 40% magic and physical with the exclusive equipment here. Here, level 2. Physical damage reduction and magic damage reduction increase by the same amount. So 40% of both. Plus you get 40% from the uh, ignition weapon plus 20. And then you get these 30% and 10%, etc. So you can get to really high amounts of resistances. No issues, you can get more than 100%. It's not really too helpful with the heart because this guy already has invincibility. But again, it helps make him survive a little bit longer when you already used the two invincibility slots. Other ones could also, like, we could also use this guy, Ghost. Which is actually really good. I mean, he has a 80% magic resistance shred on the special skill, which is not bad at all. Then he gets the 80% increased magic resistance, which basically almost takes him to 100% by default. If you build the provoke set, again, that's also going to help. Then you get the additional ignition weapon. And even if the enemies have some sort of magic pierce, they are just going to deal no damage to this guy. And if they crit, they're going to deal one damage, and this guy is going to keep receiving heals and shields and stuff. That's really, really crazy. So I would say, in general, resistances should not be ignored, because you can easily overcap them on some units, and at that point, you will receive no damage whatsoever. So that's really, really cool. And yeah. I would say that was all for this video. Uh, let me know, guys, if you already knew about this, if it was new for you. And uh, yeah, just let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.